Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Shannon Lee. Today we're going to be making one of these twisted crochet headbands. So this is for my crochet class. It is just a simple um, single crochet, nothing too crazy. Um, and then we just do a bunch of rows. I think I did like 90 something rows for this one. Um, this is a pattern I just kind of made up on my own this morning and we're going to share it with the class. So I am going to be using this uh, Loops and Thread Impeccable yarn. It is in the color Kelly Green. I believe for the original one right here that I made, I used the Red Heart Retro Stripe yarn. Um, I chose a variegated color just because I had a little bit left over and I wanted to see what it would look like. This ended up being super cute. <laughs> I do like it. Um, if I have a picture of myself wearing it, I will insert it here. But I decided I'm going to make a green one this time because, you know, it's February at the time I'm filming this and March is coming up and we're going to have St. Patrick's Day. So why not make a pretty green color? And this is also the color I'm using is called Kelly Green. And based on the label, it is a medium weight yarn and I don't know how many grams. Okay, so it's about 127 grams of this yarn. I only used about 60, I believe, for this one, because that's what happened. That's like what I figured when I weighed it. So maybe like half of this we'll end up using. So let's get started. So I'm gonna open this up. I am, oh, I'm also using an H size tuck or 5.0 mil millimeter, and it is the Susan Bass brand. I prefer this one again, because it's metal, and I also really like the hook, uh, just like the grip on it, because it is trying to be like slightly ergonomic and like better for comfort and also just better for my grip. Um, but I just like it because the other ones I have are kind of big. So let me move this out of the way. And first thing, there are there's always two th two sides to a yarn. Um, you can have an outside and you're just going to have to, you know, always be unraveling it, which I personally don't like. I'm going to try to find the center pole. So give me just a moment. So as you can see, I've got some yarn barf. Um, that's totally fine. I will still play around with it and find the end of my yarn because yeah, it's just gonna take, oh, I found it, okay. Well, let's try to get this out of here without creating more knots. So let's just untangle it right now. Okay, so it may not look like it, but I promise I got it untangled. I'm gonna do my little slip knot here. This is just how I do mine. I like to leave a longer tail. We're gonna tighten this. And again, this is for absolute beginners, so super easy. I am going to chain 21 stitches, so I'm gonna do that right now. You basically just yarn over and pull your top loop through the bottom. So that's one chain. Two, three, four, five, six, whoops, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So I just chained 21. This will be the width of my headband. If you want yours bigger or you want yours smaller, you can change the chain. Uh, just make sure that you always account for one extra stitch, which, which will be your turning chain, okay? So mine should be about the same length. So we're gonna go with that, uh, 21. And we are going to do single crochet rows. So all we're gonna do is work in the second chain from our hook, which you guys see right here. This is one, this is two. And I'm just gonna insert my hook into that chain, kind of tighten it up a little bit with my tension, yarn over. And now we're gonna pull this through one of these loops. Okay, yarn over, pull through two. And then you just continue that single crochet in each chain stitch for the rest of the row. So I'm gonna do that right now. Let you guys watch and see what this looks like. Okay. These are just single crochet stitches, guys. We went over this a little while ago in one of my other videos. It is a super easy stitch. Again, this piece is going to curl, so, you know, just kind of ignore that, just keep going. row is obviously a little bit harder to do 
just because you're working with the chain stitch. Obviously, it's curling up. I work a little bit faster, so obviously it's going to go a little bit faster for me on the video, but go ahead and take your time. You can pause, you can rewind. If you are part of my online crochet class, please know that in the Facebook group I did post a PDF document um, explaining how to do all of this, so you guys can definitely follow along with that too. Um, if you guys are better with some written instructions, I did post some photos on there as well. But if you guys are more of a visual learner, you guys can do this. Okay, so I'm at the end of my row. You're going to do exactly what I taught you guys to do in some earlier videos. All you're going to do is chain one, turn your work, and then again, working in the second stitch from your hook, so ignoring that chain that you just made, start here with the V. You're going to insert your hook underneath the two loops there. You're going to pretend as if it's one. You are going to yarn over and pull that loop through one. Yarn over and pull through two, through the last two. And you just continue this. You keep doing your single crochets um, until you reach your desired length. The length that you should eventually reach should be enough to go around your head. For an average adult, this can be anywhere between 19 to about 24 inches uh, if you are on the larger size. Um, generally, for me, I found that 21, 22 is perfect. Um, obviously, for my boyfriend, I have to go more like 25 <laughs> if I were to make a headband for him, but he doesn't want a headband, so we're not making him any of those. But this is just generally what I go for. And to do that, obviously, I use a tape measure. I mean, a lot of you should have these. If not, you guys can also just take a piece of string, measure it around your head, and then cut it. You know, don't cut your hair. Just measure it around, cut it, and then just use that as your gauge to kind of figure out how long you should be making things. Um, 20, I think I, earlier mine was like 21 or 22 inches. So that's like a pretty decent um, length. But obviously when you fold it up, it, because you kind of go like that. But you want it to be decently snug when you put on your headband, but you don't want it to be so tight that you're like just pushing this down. It's like going to give you a headache just by wearing it. Um, and I did make mine just an extra inch longer just to account for the twist, just because I knew this would be a little bit funky. So I am just going to continue with my single crochet rows until I reach my desired length, which like I said, will be about 21, 22 inches for me. Um, Again, do whatever you're, is com you know, you're comfortable with, whatever works better for you. Okay, so we're finishing up this row, and then I'm gonna chain one again, flip it, and continue with that. So I believe even though I made mine about 21 inches, it ended up being about 90 something single crochet rows, again, I have tighter tension than a lot of my beginner friends might have. Um, I obviously have been doing this for 20 years, so um, I have a lot of practice with my tension, making sure that everything stays moderately even. Um, so for my beginner friends, you know, don't feel bad if you need to frog, if you need to go back a little bit, or if you need to take your time with it. Um, you guys can definitely take your time. Uh, for my friends who are slightly more experienced with crochet, in case you're wondering, I finished this project because I was going very, very fast, um, probably within like two, three hours-ish. Um, so it is very doable, um, and you guys are just practicing your single crochet. Um, I will come back with you guys once I have gotten to my desired length, and we will talk about how to finish off and sew it and make your twist, and that's all there is to it. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so we are back and I have finished off all of my single crochets for this row. I believe I have at least. So we are going to grab my tape measure and we're going to measure this out just to be sure. Um, ju just because I haven't measured it yet. And I finished it super late last night and didn't want to finish filming. So we are at about 20 and a half inches. So I think that's good enough. 
We're just gonna go with it. Um, so, okay, we'll have my hook already fill up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave a long tail, okay? We're gonna leave a nice long tail. We are going to cut, okay? And then we can put this yarn back over here. We don't need this anymore, okay? So finishing off, you know, I just like to put my yarn through my loop. So I'm just gonna put that through there, pull it, sorry, there's cat hair, and tug, okay? So the next part that we're gonna do, since we have this nice long tail, we're gonna use that to sew in our ends. So we're gonna grab our tapestry needle and our little needle threader. I do have my scissors over here. So I am going to thread this first. Um, actually, what do I wanna do? How do I wanna do this? So you have some options here. With this other end, this is the tail that we started with. You can sew this in right now. You can weave it in and pretend like it's not there. And I believe I'm gonna do that now because last time I didn't do that and it was kind of a pain in the butt to do. So we're gonna thread my needle work on that really quick and as you guys have seen some of my previous videos on finishing off I don't know if I had to refilm that or not um, I just like to put my yarn back in my work just a little bit and basically the idea with finishing off your piece is that you're gonna sew a little bit this way a little bit back and then finish out that way so we're gonna do that. We're just gonna kind of weave in and out of these different fibers. The idea behind this method is that if it were to unravel, it would actually um, hopefully just tangle itself up so that it wouldn't actually be able to do that. So let's finish this up really quick. It only takes a few seconds. It is the one thing that all fiber artists really hate doing. Anybody else out there, if you guys really hate weaving in your ends, you know, comment down below with a little yarn emoji. Just let me know <laughs> that we're all in this together and we all hate it. Um, I always save weaving and ends to the very end of my project. So, and then I always tug, 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 just to make sure it's nice and snug. And then I will snip that off. So, we are gonna go back to um, our piece. So obviously we have our two ends right here. You can lay them over each other. I'm gonna thread this just so it's a little bit easier later because I'm going to be holding my piece so I'm going to thread the end. Whoop. We're going to thread that. <clears throat> okay so for folding your headband. <laughs> so line up the pieces. Obviously mine looks a little bit bigger. My stitches were much tighter at the beginning. It's totally fine. Um, so usually you line it up perfectly. Make sure everything's nice and even especially on this side because you want this to be right in the, right in the middle. Then with the top piece, I like to move it down about halfway. Sometimes I just kind of have to move around the back end. But you want this about halfway down that other piece. Okay, so move the front piece down about halfway. <clears throat> about. And then take the back piece and you fold it over this so that the ends look like this and this one's kind of sandwiched in the middle. And then, again, you might need to play with this, just be careful. Take the other piece that's kind of hanging out over here, and you're gonna fold that one up. So you should end up with this being one piece, this U, and this other U being another piece so that they're all intertwined. From here, you're just gonna do a whip stitch. I'm gonna start my needle by putting it through this one right here so we can get a nice clean. And I'm going to sew through all four of these pieces at one time. That is the whole idea behind it. Obviously it takes some time. If you obviously want my newbies out there, you are more than welcome to use your safety pins or you know any paper clips or anything else to kind of help hold these together while you're working. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna do a whip stitch, which is basically you're starting over here. You just go across and you'll put your needle through all these pieces to come out through this side and pull. And that creates your little whip stitch. And we are just gonna continue this all the way down and I personally like to go over it twice just to make sure I got all the pieces because I've done this before and I have, I've missed them. So we're gonna keep doing that, pulling it tight, making sure things are not too loose. We're almost there. <laughs> oh, 
this part is so satisfying because like you know you're almost done and that's like my favorite part of a project being done and just enjoying the finished piece okay so I made it to my end guess what I'm gonna go right back down to this side so we're gonna continue doing stitches just keep making sure you're going through all four layers I know it's really hard you'll find out if you did or didn't um, when you flip this out later okay almost and this is why I said I like your I like you guys to have the metal tapestry needles because the plastic ones at this point might start bending because we're doing a lot of heavy duty sewing over here and we're going through a lot of pieces so it just kind of makes more sense that we have some more okay we're almost there And then right at the end, I like to do like a little extra stitch or two. So that should have been enough to close it off. You can also tug on them and you can check your folds just to make sure everything was sewn. Mine looks good. It was, you know. So what I'm going to do at this point, <clears throat> same thing I did with the other end. I'm just going to weave in this end. So I'm going to go a little bit this way back, like a little zigzag. So we are just going to sew that in, try to hide our ends the best we can. Um, I do I don't have that much yarn left. I probably should have left myself a longer tail slightly longer tail, but it's fine. We are just gonna keep going. Okay. Again, the whole purpose of this is so that hopefully if it were to unravel, it just forms a giant knot <laughs> anyway. And I personally like to go around the areas that I had my yarn originally, going through those same loops so it will make that knot. But it's up to you guys, and in the future I will show you guys some other methods to weaving in your ends, but this is just one that I've used, one that I really like. Okay, I'm just gonna pull that. Always, when after you weaved in your ends, tug a little bit, try to make sure everything's not too tight. We can snip that. And then this is the underside that should be facing your head. And we're just gonna flip this out. So it looks like I twisted mine a little bit, so we're just gonna, it's totally fine. Totally fine, I'm just gonna go with it. Um, but just remember, typically you want your, your pieces to be flat when you're folding them, and clearly I just, twisted mine so don't know how I did that no maybe it's not okay never mind I fixed it okay so it is supposed to have this twist sorry it's hard to like look at it because mine is like a solid color versus the other one I made which was multicolor so it's a little bit easier to figure that out okay so basically this is what it looks like um, it looks a little funky but I promise when you put it on it'll look a lot better um, but that is just one way to make a twisted headband. I will post more tutorials in the future about this. Um, like I said, this is just one method that I've tried and I do like. Um, there is another one where instead of doing a bunch of single crochet rows like this and making it super tight, we can do, we can start with the foundation chain being the length of your head, you know, the circumference of your head, and just doing double crochet stitches until you get to the end and still sewing in the ends the exact same way. Basically with a twisted headband, that fold is the most important part and that's how you do that. So yeah, these are my headbands and I'm gonna go try them on. So this is what one of the green one looks like. Kinda cute. Obviously the twist is a little weird, but it totally works. Who cares? It, it's still fine. <laughs> and it also is kinda warm, so yeah, I'll show you guys the rainbow one in a minute. And this is what my rainbow one looks like. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you guys in another crochet class and we'll get started on some more projects.